Texas Sports Extra. It's a big week for basketball with the postseason starting up and an even bigger week for teams looking to close out the regular season strong. One of those teams is right here in town. The Quincy High Blue Devils need to win out to bring home the Western Big Six title. And that road started tonight as they welcome in Rock Island. WGM Steve Luton was at Blue Devil Gym and now joins me back in the studio to break it all down. Steve, I'll send it over to you. Thanks a lot, Brennan. Two games to go, and the Blue Devils needed to win both to claim the Western Big Six championship. And it doesn't get better than having longtime rival Rock Island come to town. Nights like this have helped the Blue Devils get their tradition. From the 50s teams coached by George Latham to the 60s and 70s of Cheryl Hanks to the 80s teams of Jerry Leggett and great teams coached by Lauren Wallace, Sean Taylor, now Andy Douglas. All those Blue Devils teams wanted their name on that wall to show what they had accomplished. The Devils 26 and three on the season, a week away from postseason starting, but all the Blue Devils focus tonight was beating Rock Island. Ralph Wires got things going. He sprained his ankle on Saturday, no problem tonight. He knocks down that first shot, but Rock Island had its own arsenal. Larry Oliver Jr. bombs away. He scored 18. This one was going to be a dandy. They were up nine to three, but you knew Keyshawn Thomas would play a big role in this game. The 6'6 Jr. gets that bucket, and then here, a hop, a step, and left hand, he scored 13 points tonight to help Quincy High School. After a Rock Island miss, here they come again. Tyler Sprick to the hole. Quincy scored seven straight. They led 10 to eight. The Devils were rolling now, and Tyler Sprick was feeling it. He buried that three, and the crowd was jumping. Sprick was a huge spark. After the steal, Bradley Longcor, the third, takes it down. Quincy up 20 to 15 after one quarter. Rock Island's won 23 games this year. You knew it would still be a battle. Third quarter action. Dom Clay hit Ralph Wires for the layup, and Andy Douglas was happy with how his team was pushing the ball up court. Let's continue with this episode of The Wire. That's Camden Wires with the three. And then minutes later, Ralph Wires goes in all alone. Quincy built a nice lead at the half, 33 to 20. But this rivalry was not built on easy wins. Here, Kyle Lamonte buries one from the corner, and Rock Island started the second half scoring the first 11. But that was enough of that. Bradley Longcore the third taking over. He goes to the hole, and Quincy still led after three, 41 to 35. Longcore had 17. And then in the fourth quarter, Dom Clay was the man. He kept the Blue Devils ahead and helped seal the Devils' 27th victory of the season. The final score, Quincy High wins it over Rock Island, 58 to 48. And now it's time to jump in the boat and go upriver. These two teams will go at it again in just 45 hours up in Rock Island. Brennan, it's going to be a roller coaster the rest of the way. Great game tonight. It's going to be a dandy Thursday night as well. Back to you. Thanks, Steve. Sticking on this side of the river in Illinois, a big 1A showdown was taking place in Camp Point this evening. West Central taking on the Central Panthers, two of the top teams in Class 1A. Camp Point had the early lead but was trailing in the second half. They work it down low to Elijah Ginnenbacher, and he's able to collect the two points in the paint. But here come the Cougars. Zach Evans intercepts this one. He'll look back and, yeah, you're clear for takeoff, my man. Throwing it down with two hands. Panthers looking to respond. Gavin blew it with his best imitation of the dream shake. Puts in the layup. This is when things got interesting. Drew Pabin gets open from beyond the arc. He'll spot up and knock down the trifecta. He was just beginning to get things going. This time, top of the key. Time for that heat check. He'll pull the trigger from downtown. And that one's money. Central trying to keep chipping away at that Cougar lead. Blew it again. Bowling his way down low. Looking like an acrobat right there as he connects on the layup. Panthers battled hard, but in the end, they would fall to West Central 67 to 61. I'm hoping these two teams can meet up again in the Class 1A postseason. Up the road in Rushville, the Rockets were taking on the Chargers of Illini West. Both teams looking to get some momentum before the postseason starts. How about this Charger passing? They set up Reese Shoup in the corner, and he sends this one down the shoot for three. On the other end, Carter Freytug was taking things into his own hands. He drives baseline, comes up empty the first time, but was able to clean the glass for the second chance points. Illini West must have been taking notes. They check up a three and come up empty, but Hayden Rankin grabs the board and puts it back in for two. Rushville keeping up with the Chargers on the other end. This time, Freytug testing his luck from downtown. He'll come away with three points of his own. No team giving the edge in this one. Colby Robertson, how about this? Finding Rankin on the nice cut, and he cruises in for the easy score. Both teams exchanging back and forth, but when it's all over, Illini West edges out Rushville 54 to 49. Let's check in on other scores from Illinois. Quincy Notre Dame with a big victory over West Hancock on the road, 68 to 64. Brown County gets by Pleasant Hill 57 to 44 at home. Pittsfield defeats Calhoun 60 to 44. 
Gregsville Perry edges out Triopia 53 to 47 and Unity falls to Western 56 to 42. Across the river in Missouri, how about a little more rivalry action coming your way? Hannibal was hosting Palmyra at Corp tonight. Let's start off with the girls. Lady Panthers looking to push the pace right out of the gates. Williams finds Sydney Compton. She navigates herself all the way to the cup to cap off the fast break. Hannibal wasn't going to go down without a fight. They kick it out in the corner to Caitlin Ferguson Minor, and she'll can the baseline jumper. Lady Pirates looking to build off that shot, but Claire Williams, she had other plans. She swipes this pass, and she'll take it coast to coast for the bucket. Hannibal wasn't going to let that play phase them. They find Mariah, Mariah Mayfield hanging out from three-point line, and she makes Palmyra pay by knocking in a three. However, Williams and company, they came ready to play in this one, and Palmyra would pick up the road victory as they take down Hannibal 51 to 36. The boys were also in action in Hannibal this evening. Palmyra looking for the road sweep. Pirates had their game faces on. Chase Timbrook gets open from downtown. He stops, drops, and pops, and comes away with the tray. On the other end, Bear Bach dishing it to Ryan McKinney, and he answers punch for punch, draining a three-pointer of his own. More from the Panthers showing off their patience and passing on this possession. Finally, Jacob Barnes gets open at the top of the key. He lets it fly from beyond the arc, and after a few friendly bounces, finds the bottom of the net for three more points. The scoring wouldn't stop there, and Palmyra continues to show why they're one of the top teams in the area as they come away with the 49-22 victory over Hannibal. Panthers are now 20-3-1 on the year. And other boys scores in Missouri. South Shelby gets by Highland 57 to 40. Monroe City takes down Brookfield 69 to 36. And Caden gets the victory over Marion County 66 to 48. While North Shelby defeats Scotland County 47 to 41. On the girls side of things, South Shelby girls get by Highland 40 to 32. Monroe City takes down Brookfield 34 to 22. And North Shelby gets by Scotland County 52 to 25. Up in the Hawkeye State. Kika falls to Kirksville 64 to 38. Fort Madison defeats Ottumwa 69 to 64. And on the girls' side, postseason action, Holy Trinity Catholic gets by English Valley 49 to 13. Around the tri-states, we see plenty of athletes take their athletic careers to the college ranks. Most specialize in one sport, but for QHS standout athlete Evan Sohn, he believes playing more than one sport had helped him grow as an athlete. We take a closer look for tonight's Sports in Focus. Quincy's Evan Sohn signed his letter of intent to continue his baseball career at John Wood Community College. The standout outfielder also played soccer for the Blue Devils, and he believes he wouldn't be where he is today without his time on the pitch. Yeah, soccer has definitely helped. I mean, with my speed, leg strength, and it's just been a great thing to be a multi-sport athlete because um, I feel like it's helped me prepare me for baseball. And then just also like on the mental health side of things, it's like accepting loss, learning from failures. It's just uh, dealing with that is a big thing that's helped me a lot to learn. Stone had plenty of college options, but felt like nowhere was a better fit for him than staying at home at John Wood. John Wood is a great program I love going to. Like right when I first went on my visit, like the coaches like there say like if you're not 110 percent in, don't come here. So like I took that to heart. Like they want you to come here, they want you to develop as a player, and they want you to get the best that you can uh, before you go off to another university. Quincy High head baseball coach Rick Lawson couldn't be happier for Evan and knows the Blazers are getting an all-around great player. Uh, I mean, I, I would say if, if they gave out a gold glove for high school outfielders, Evan Sohn would win it. He, that, that's the kind of guy he's getting, a guy that's going to get on base, he's going to create runs, and he's going to prevent runs. So we'll be looking to bring that same philosophy to the Blazers next year. Meanwhile, Evan still has one more season left with the Blue Devils as they hope to have a big year on the diamond with plenty of players returning this spring. As always, it was another great night for basketball and the Tri-States will be out here the rest of the week bringing you all that postseason coverage. Plenty of teams looking to bring home regional titles as well and we'll be along for the ride. But for right now, that's all the time we have for sports. Thanks for dropping by and have a great night.